Welcome into the Alana Inquirer podcast. Jeremy Warner here live back at the fort, uh, holding down the fort here at Illinois. Derek Piper and Joy Wagner. We're in Bloomington, Indiana for a phenomenal basketball game. Of course, it did not go Illinois' way. They led for 26 minutes at number 14, Indiana, despite not having Terrence Shannon Jr., who was out with a concussion. Uh, but Derek, they weren't able to hold on. Uh, it kind of had a lot of similar vibes. Uh, to the Iowa loss where, man, you love the effort. Man, you, you love the toughness and and the way to take the lead on the road, uh, but you didn't execute enough to, to get a big quad one road victory. Yeah, the execution down the stretch was spotty. Didn't have the three-point shooting there in the second half. 0 for 8 from deep. And of course, the R.J. Melendez three that could have tied it. Looked like a pretty good one, a lot better than the wide-open shot that he took earlier in the game, which, of course, uh, didn't hit anything. But, yeah, I mean, you can also throw in – Matthew Meyer going off in the first half, which is something that happened there in Iowa City. And uh, same thing uh, here today as he was red hot. I mean, four threes, was just making plays all over the court, blocking shots. He had to be great uh, for an Illinois team that was missing their leading scorer in Terrence Shannon. And he really was there in the first half. Uh, I think that Luke Goody provided a really nice spark off the bench at 23 minutes. Uh, that was great to see. Ty gave some really good minutes, too. Uh, and like you said, I mean, it was, it was a high-level basketball game. Another one, I know that Illinois fans, when you think about Iowa being a rival, Indiana being a rival, uh, you're, you're probably not too satisfied with the old, you know, that was a really fun game. It doesn't uh, it doesn't do it enough uh, when you get swept now by Indiana. But uh, considering the circumstances, I think it was a, a pretty impressive showing for Illinois. But, of course, uh, they haven't been in a whole lot of close games and. That one in the Iowa game, you, you made some mistakes down the stretch that didn't allow you to close it out and come away with a win. Yeah, Derek, the way I'm thinking about this team, like the foundation of what they have, I like. They have talent. Um, to be able to go to Indiana, which I think is a really, really good team, uh, and compete without one of your best players, I, I think shows that you can defend, um, shows that you have some toughness, uh, and shows that you got some good players, that you got Matthew Meyer who can go off like that. Like, I'm going to have Illinois has a chance in the tournament because Matthew Meyer can go off at, at any moment and they play pretty good defense for the most part. But there are concerns. It's not a good shooting team. Six of 12 in the first half from three, 0 of eight in the second half, and they're young. Uh, the last minute there, Derek, you had freshmen making freshman mistakes. Jade Neps, you got to get Matthew Meyer the ball. I know you're good, man. You're going to have many opportunities to do this, but Matthew Meyer has to touch the ball. Ty Rogers had a turnover. Um, again, Coleman Hawkins, I thought, could have gotten Matthew Meyer the ball in that possession at some point. And then for, for Ty to, to foul Shafino uh, in that final minute, uh, had a great defensive possession, forced a tough shot, and just follow them. That's the stuff that concerns you is youth and the lack of consistent three point shooting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jaden, you know, he had one drive where. Uh, the play that Trace threw it off of him, that was kind of in the final closing five, six minutes. Uh, that was a, a drive into traffic and, and cop did a good job of getting in, into position. But ultimately, that was a, a turnover, essentially, uh, for Jaden. And then also, he kind of maybe got bailed out a little bit on the foul call when Huchifino looked like he got a lot of ball in that block, like you are talking about that possession where Matt was on the perimeter clapping for the ball and uh, wasn't able to get it to him. I know Matt just went like, what, one for seven in the second half, but still in those crunch time moments, he's got to be the one that you, you want to be able to make a play and get a shot. Uh, unfortunately, you couldn't really draw it up as far as the final shot to RJ. I mean, if you were handpicking who you want to take that three, RJ's not one of the first choices you would, you would want. I know that Joey Wagner and I were discussing it, and uh, I said, wouldn't you have thought of you know, putting Luke there in that lineup instead of RJ – would have made more sense. But uh, to Joey's point, which he brought up was uh, they didn't ultimately get to foul because they were trying to trap. It led to a TJD dunk. I think RJ out there uh, in the press with his length to try to maybe create a turnover or five second or whatever. Um, but you didn't really get to sub him out. So then RJ taking that shot and he's just a, a guy that's in a, a huge shooting rut. And overall, Illinois continues to be woeful from three for the most part. So uh, yeah, there are definitely blemishes for this team. 
Ty having a turnover and then the foul. Uh, Apps going to the free throw line and miss it. It looks like those guys look like young freshman players in those moments. And uh, Illinois can't really afford that, especially on a, a game where you couldn't find Terrence Shannon to help you uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm still fairly encouraged, but closing out games. And we know that when your season's on the line coming up next month, that's going to be something that you have in the back of your mind. Yeah, listen, the, the Big Ten title race is done for Illinois. Uh, I, I think it's been done here for a little bit. Uh, I think the Iowa game was a big blow to that. The Penn State game, another big blow. They've lost three or four here um, on the road, all of them. Uh, to, to teams that probably are going to be in the NCAA tournament, Penn State still got some work to do. But um, it, it's a good team, not a great team. I, I think we know that. Um, but you're just trying to clean up some things. And and one thing that's concerning, but also one thing that's a positive, is you had R.J. Melendez, who started this game, seems like because Ty Rogers was sick. Um, but his slump just continues, man. Like that last shot was a good look. It looked as good of a shot as we've seen from R.J. Melendez in a long time. Just didn't go in. Um, I'd almost rather Matthew Meyer have shoot a contested shot at this point, but it was an open look, right? And, and almost forced overtime. But Luke Goody, th this was this looked like Luke Goody. Th this looked like the Luke Goody we thought we could have seen all season. And if there's one thing that makes you optimistic that you know some of these threes might go in in the future, um, that spot could be helped a little bit and make the difference in some of these close games. Is Luke Goody had seven points on three for five shooting, hit a three. I thought the one with about three minutes left, Derek, was going down, and, and that probably would have changed the game. But that was a good look from him, went in and out. But uh, what did you think of, of Luke Goody's emergence? And, and man, I feel for RJ Melendez. Like, I, I get it. He's hurting you right now. But, God, he's going through it right now. Yeah, for someone to be fighting it that much with his confidence and to know that he is a, a talented player, and even I know it's warm ups is a totally different. Uh, situation, but he's out here in warmups just knocking down threes. Uh, our good friend Trevor Valise was here and and told me as I walked up, he's like, I think I've seen RJ hit like 19 in a row from the corner, and and that's he's getting open shots and he's just not able to do it. And when he missed as bad as he did, then you just feel for a guy just his his confidence is shot. He looks broken right now. I mean, he had the missed layups. The dunk, I mean, he should have dunked that. He was barely fouled. Like, yeah. I, 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 contacted him, but that was not like that was that's all head. And I know Ted Lasso says, don't bring up the word. It's the yips, man. Like, the, it's it's all mental because you're right. I was there at the Iowa game watching him shoot, and Brad came up and asked about Goody. And I said, RJ's making every one of them. Um, and it's just like, yeah, it's about translating it in games, and he just can't do it right now. And it's tough to watch. Very tough. And on that note, like you hope that Luke continues to progress because, uh, let's be honest, he's probably going to be stealing RJ's minutes, especially when you have a, a healthy Terrence Shannon return to the lineup. I think that Luke, it was very encouraging to see him continue to be someone that can make shots. I, I'm with you. I mean, that one from the corner looked good to me. It was it was down and then out. Uh, gives really good energy. He was fighting Race Thompson a lot there in the post. I know that Luke took responsibility. We got a chance to talk to him. He's like, yeah, maybe – I might have made a, a defensive mistake or two that, that uh, I'll take accountability for. Uh, and he's not going to be the, you know, he's not as athletic as RJ or Ty or some of those guys, but he's, he's going to really battle and to, to give you a couple assists, a couple of rebounds. And then, of course, the, the shot making and a guy that just already in game three since coming back from injury looks pretty comfortable. Like he, he, he doesn't seem like he's uh, trying to, to find his way or, or worried about. Uh, you know, clicking with his teammates. He, he, he's been able to, I know it's still a small sample size, but today he seemed to be fitting in pretty seamlessly. Let's bring up Matthew Meyer, man. 24 points, eight rebounds, five blocks. They needed this uh, for, for him to have a chance, but he was locked in. Something about going on the road, these tough environments, these, these bright moments against ranked opponents. He shows up, man. Like, if you can get Shannon back soon, obviously get him going, get Goody involved. This is a guy that, that gives you a chance. I know I keep saying it, but he could be the he could be a star in March Madness. So uh, to see this, to see that back to back threes in 19 seconds, he's made for those moments, man. He definitely yeah. is. I know he plays the card of you know I don't I don't put too much into the the venue or the you know think too much about the game itself. I just go out there and do my thing. But uh, Madison Square Garden was a, gr a great example of a, a big moment against a, a big time opponent. Uh, went to Iowa and, and had that heater there in the first half uh, at Wisconsin, 26 points in the Kohl Center when you really needed it. And then today to be able to, in a situation 
where you're missing Shannon and you know going in that Meyer's got to be a star. I mean, he was the best player on the floor for the most part. I know Trace ended up with a really good stat line uh, and out ultimately was more efficient and outplayed him uh, as the game concluded there. But Matt has been awesome. And, and I mean, we've seen him like to, to the highest extent is like Jimmer Fredette and Steph Curry and those guys that can really, you know, carry your team in, in a tournament with their, their outside shooting. And uh, I think that Matt's got that capability. He's, he's a really gifted scorer. Uh, he said that, you know, he, he takes a lot of blame for not being able to close it out because he didn't shoot it all that well and liked his looks there in the second half. He just wasn't able to make them, but that was, that was impressive. And he had the Hoosiers fans worried for a while because he was, he was going off. Man, I didn't think this would be possible, but Trace Jackson Davis, I thought Illinois played him pretty well today. They double teamed Derek. They got the ball out of his hands. Uh, didn't have a lot of assists tonight, but ended up with 26 points, 12 rebounds. They did get five turnovers on him, which I thought was good, but five blocks as well. He's playing as well as anybody in the country, and that's what all Americans do, man. And he was huge down the stretch for them. I'm starting to think. I, now i got to start thinking about my Big Ten Player of the Year because, you know, Edie's really good. Jackson Davis is really, really good. Um, they both are so important to their teams. But what do you think? Is, is he making this a race? I think that, yeah, he deserves legit consideration. And if there were a situation where Indiana really pushes Purdue in, in the in the race here, now, again, there's there's still a, a decent amount of separation, probably by two games uh, in the standings. But uh, as for Trace to, you know, be putting up like 23-12 and uh, like five assists a game and leads the, the league in blocks, like he's – him and Jalen Pickett are the only guys in, in the Big Ten that are top ten – scoring rebounds and assists uh, all, all in the in the conference. So uh, I, I think he's very deserving of it. I, I'd probably still lean Edie, but uh, I, I don't think there's been since really back to that first Illinois game there in Champaign, I don't think there's been anybody better probably in college basketball during that stretch, which is pretty much the last month to, to five, six weeks. So, uh, yeah, I think that it's still something to monitor. And we get an, we're lucky and fortunate to get another matchup between those two. Uh, there in West Lafayette. So we'll see uh, who comes out of that one. But um, maybe, yeah, again, if Indiana were to, to make a real run at this and maybe even take the, the Big Ten title or get a share from it, uh, I think it's something to, to really look at. But, yeah, Edie, I mean, not to take anything away from him, he's been the most dominant player yeah. from start to finish this season. Yeah, and to, he's probably going to win the Big Ten title still, uh, unless they really uh, – here. Uh, they got a pretty easy schedule down the stretch. We don't think about this because there are a lot of older players, right? You got Shannon, you got Meyer, you got Hawkins. But there still is a team that's going through some growing pains, right? I think of Dane Danger. Had some really bad moments late in the game. Too many turnovers. Had 11 points. You see what makes him very valuable, Derek. Um, but he had some turnovers. Jaden Epps had some big buckets in that second half to keep the lead. But he's got to know this has got to go to the hot guy. this has got to go to to Matthew Meyer at some point. And then Ty Rogers has struggled to finish around the rim. I don't know if that reverse back backwards layup is, is going to work for him very consistently. A lot of good things, positives from those guys, but also some things they're going to have to learn from. For sure. You get in those crunch time moments and, and on the road and – uh, maybe as, as a freshman, new guy, and, and you still kind of treat Jane Danger as that because he hasn't had the the experiences of being relied on and playing in a whole lot of basketball games. Yeah, like the foul trouble um, and, and also some of the turnovers uh, were an issue for him. And yeah, Jaden's just got – I think Jaden, I know he only took four threes, still sometimes settles for the three a little bit too much, uh, was loose with the ball kind of early. And, yeah, uh, like we talked about, wanting – kind of have the the feel of a point guard to to get the ball where it needs to go and that was obviously uh to matthew meyer and and, and ty i loved his energy uh he did just he had a, a turnover late and and the foul that you you just can't have you you want hutchifino i know he's a really good mid-range shooter off the bounce that uh just just make him make that shot that's like a 17 footer uh in a, in a big moment so uh while we kind of think of like in recent years you know, Trent Frazier, obviously Io, the guys that made the clutch shots in those close games. But it, it also goes to be said of, you know, the the Grandisons, the DeMonte Williams, the, the other guys that have all had all been there. There were, that was a team full of uh, of guys that had, you know, been through the wars and had been on the road and won close games and it didn't get rattled. So this is a little bit different where, yeah, Meyer's been there before uh, you, to an extent, Hawkins a little bit, obviously Shannon, but 
uh, for some of those other young pieces or inexperienced pieces, that that's that's showing itself here late in some of these games. Yeah, and we can we can discuss some of these late game moments, Derek. But they had moments earlier, right? Um, they were nine of twenty two, Illinois f- from layups. Uh, Indiana was thirteen of twenty nine. By the way, that shows two long teams. Jackson Davis, Meyer, Hawkins all had uh, a, a part of that. Um, but one of the big moments I thought was Illinois had this run going, eight zero run. Coleman Hawkins, this big dunk, and he was teed up. Uh, I think it was Kelly Pfeiffer on that one. What would you make of that, Derek? I. I don't know. I, I wasn't obviously close enough to know what he said. I, I hated it. I hated the call because it just seemed like he, you know, turned after dunking and just said something to Trace, which is, I mean, he put Trace on a poster. And uh, there was nothing, like, malicious. He, he didn't do anything crazy. It just seemed like he said something to him and or just screamed or yelled or whatever you want to call it in, in excitement. And this, is, this is basketball. It, These are grown to, men. Yeah. Coleman Hawkins is a grown man now. Um <laughs> Terry Jackson Davis is a grown man. This isn't high school ball. Exactly. Come on, man. These guys are getting paid. Like, let's let's let them show some emotion. That's fun, right? And then TJD can come back. He he doesn't need to be protected there. Like, he no. went off for twenty six points. Like, let's have fun with this sports. I, I I don't think people need to be like D Generation X, <laughs> suck it version on there. <laughs> but we can we can hold that back. But come yeah. on, let's. Let's let these guys show some emotion. That that's a fun college basketball play that shouldn't have impacted the game. They get two free throws. They go on a 7-0 run. Kudos to Illinois for, for retaking or keeping the lead and retaking the lead. But uh, I just don't insert your game. Don't insert yourself into the game right there. No, and it, it also put Coleman on the bench with two fouls. And yeah. it yeah, it was something that should have been a huge momentum shot for for Illinois, and and really it, it flipped there and kind of took some of the wind out of their sails. But, yeah, it, it, let's not make this the the no fun league. Uh, I, I know that, you know, the NFL has dialed down some of their celebrations too. It, it, I just think it's all – it sucks. It's an emotional game. I, I, was it Pfeiffer that called the the tech on Trent? That, that's cash here actually in this building? I think so. I, I think it might have been. Um, I don't like it. Definitely don't. And, I mean, Trace was talking there in Champagne Like, he was doing the whole he can't guard me and uh, – just let these guys play. Let it, I mean, some of the smack talk, that's that's the essence of basketball. That's what they do on the playground from the time when you play this game really young to now and just let them go. Yeah, Derek, you got to – like, that was that was an awesome play. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just a, a phenomenal play. So, um, all right, Derek, this is a, a big week upcoming. I, you know, Illinois has got to win some games. Uh, it, they're, they're probably stuck as a middle – seed now in the NCAA tournament. I don't know what their range is going to be. I'm going to talk with Brad Evans on the podcast uh, sometime this week, probably between a six and a 10, I, I think is their their range right now, probably an eight after today. Um, but you got Minnesota on Monday. That's a get right game. We'll see if Terrence Shannon's out of concussion protocol by then. But even if he's not, you need to take care of business. Uh, then you got a big open game uh, against Northwestern. You win that, you get to 10 wins in the Big Ten. Uh, I think you feel pretty good about just making the tournament. And then you look to to close with a little bit of momentum late in the season with you got away at Ohio State, home against Michigan, and on the road against Purdue. So what do you think of this next week for Illinois? I think the chance to go home and, and to take care of, obviously, Minnesota, not a very good team at all, and, and should be able to ha- hammer them even without Shannon. Northwestern, keep proving – me wrong or, or he made me shake my head. I can't believe what they're doing. They got Iowa tomorrow and Evanston. If they win win that and pull off the trifecta of beating Purdue, Indiana, and Iowa all at home right in a row, that would be pretty crazy. But uh, regardless, it won't be an easy game against the, the Cats because of the way that they're defending right now. They're a really physical defense that uh, can challenge you. You know, the Adige is one of the, the best perimeter defenders probably in the Big Ten. And uh, Boo Boo, has been a lot more reliable than we've seen in recent years, someone that's been more efficient and able to – to go that out there and, and score it. And uh, so that's going to be a, a tough game, not a, not a gimme. I still think it's one that Illinois should win. And obviously you can see there, they're kind of favored right now. It's like six point favorites, but uh, and then you I mean, Ohio state on the road, Ohio state's the bottom is completely falling out. I mean, maybe, you know, they still got talent and maybe they can have one more win left in them. I don't know if they're going to go three and 17 in big 10 play. Uh, but into, up until that Purdue game, it seems like a pretty favorable stretch. And, yeah, let's let's please just 
see them taking care of business enough so we can stop having the, well, will this team actually make the tournament? I, they have every reason still to make the tournament, and that ranking's still in good shape. Uh, did miss an opportunity today to really, like, this would have – I think this would have been their most impressive win of the season. And that's not, like, a hot take. I know that, you know, it's UCLA – hot. It's pretty spicy. UCLA and Texas, better teams on paper than Indiana, but when you have a, a true road game, and especially when you factor in the, the Shannon absence, I, that's what I – think was there at, at stake but i, I agree that it, I, I think we've kind of talked about this the opportunities to really like jump a seed line or two are, are limited i know you maybe you can get that in the in the big 10 tournament too but um yeah on that seven eight seed line uh you're gonna have to you're gonna have to maybe pull an upset to get where you want to go but we, we know this team can do it it's just uh hopefully they can boost their resume a little bit more the six seed line would be really ideal i think yeah, they're just lacking these marquee wins now. Like they had the two that just solidify. Like they could, I think, go just win one more game, Derek, and still be in like a playing game because of those wins, right? The UCLA and Texas yeah. wins. Uh, but if they get to ten wins in the Big Ten, they're probably an eight nine line uh, kind of team. If they get three more, maybe they're seven. Uh, if they get four more, maybe they're six or something like that. And then you add the Big Ten tournament into the mix. But this is a team that's going to have to ups upset somebody in, in the second round of the tournament if they get that far. So. Um, this team's capable. Of, like, I just kind of want. I've I've texted you this, Derek. I kind of want to fast forward to March twelfth and see who they're playing. Like, yeah. I I don't know. Yes, we're getting Luke Goody up to speed, getting him progressing. We've seen this natural progression, getting better and better every game. I think it's so important. Jade Neps, Dane Danger, uh, Ty Rogers, learning from these experiences. Sincere Harris has to learn. Um, missed a couple, you know, takes to the rim. He's got to get under control there. Those guys can take away something from this. But when we talk about resume, when we talk about how are we going to remember this season, I don't know if anything left in the regular season outside of a win at Purdue is going to be all that memorable. It's going to be what matchup do they get on March 12th and how do they take advantage of the opportunity in the NCAA tournament. So I, I hate to do that because we're going to have so many podcasts between there and there and, and so much to talk about between them and there. But that's where I'm at. It's like, okay, they're probably going to be a, a 7 through a 10 seed. And uh, we'll see what they do first and second round. Yeah, and that's always what this season's been about, is, is what that NCAA tournament uh, run or, or lack thereof is going to look like. And when you have that much talent on paper, you would hope that uh, regardless of the seed, even if you have a, a tougher path than in years past, that you can get to that elusive second round, but uh, or I should say second weekend. But, uh, I yeah, they're, they're capable. The Purdue game could still loom large as far as the, the resume – uh, I know that, you know, as you if you get in like a tough game at home against Northwestern or, or Michigan, learning from those moments, like you, you said, could really be big for some of these young guys. And uh, I was interested to see how the defense would show up because they've been kind of getting exploited against some of those better offensive squads, those that are in the top 25 nationally of offensive efficiency. I thought they guarded Trace pretty well, uh, obviously still ended up with a, a great stat line. Uh, and, yeah, I think that another thing I – I originally wrote in our pre in my preview and got rid of like we haven't necessarily seen we haven't seen Shannon and Meyer have games together a whole lot like great scoring games together uh, of nineteen now I won't really count this one because Shannon wasn't available but nineteen high major games only four times have, have both uh, had thirteen points or more so I think as you kind of look at them reaching their ceiling and trying to, to play their best basketball. I think that's part of it, obviously. But, no, I, I fully agree. Get to the tournament, uh, see what this team can do. And they're going to have to now, as it stands, be able to you know beat a, a two seed if you're a, a seven or a ten or if you're in that eight, nine, upset a, a one seed to get to that sweet 16. But they're capable of it. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a tough test. Yeah. Um... I can understand why there wouldn't be a lot of confidence that they can do it because they're just struggling to get these kind of wins against NCAA tournament teams here recently. Well, Derek Piper, uh, safe travels back, man. Appreciate you. Uh, and uh, how was Bloomington? It was fun as always. Always one of my favorite spots to come. We hit up uh, Nick's for some pizza and a, and a couple of pitchers of soda and uh, stopped by Kilroy's. And, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, is uh, is Indiana where where is it rank right now for you in, in opposing venues? Because that looked like a pretty great atmosphere. Yeah, I, I think I'd still give it to Mackey. I think Mackey is number one. I think they've asserted themselves here the last five or so years. I, I've traditionally counted this as number one uh, as far as road venues, but.
but I recently have put Mackey there. I don't know if it's because I sit in row 75 and maybe I'm a little bitter here at uh, Assembly Hall and I, I've knocked him down a, a rung. But it, yeah, for people who don't know, the media have to make a trek up to Mount Everest. Uh, yes. in Bloomington, yeah. And uh, Joey is always super uh, happy yeah. about that. But um, yeah, I think it's it's right there with the best in the Big Ten. And I'd probably give Mackey a slight edge. Uh, but it, it was rocking today. I mean, it was a great game. It was uh, a back and forth, trading punches type of game. And uh, there was a good stretch where people in front of us weren't sitting in their seats for like the final five, six, seven minutes of the game. Yeah, a uh, phenomenal game. I, I never thought uh, Indiana would be dethroned as the best road venue. And I think Purdue has done that. The, the crowd, the students there are just uh, unbelievable. Uh, for Derek Piper, though, everybody, thank you for listening to the Line Enquirer podcast. Thanks to our YouTube listeners and watchers. Give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, thank you for listening to us on the podcast as well. Give us a, a like there, follow us, subscribe to us on there as well. we got plenty of content coming up at IlliniInquirer.com. Everybody have a great day. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time on the Illini Enquirer podcast.